picture this. Picture it's today, but at 6 p.m. and you're about to leave the office. As you're packing up, an email pops up. <laughs> You've never had this happen, right? And it's urgent work, again, quote unquote, urgent work that needs your attention. So now you're staying late to finish this task. And when you finally do get home, you're exhausted. And you're too exhausted to enjoy that personal time. This scenario I know is all too familiar for all of us. And it shows the stark reality between this work-life balance and what we actually live. So uh, I, I know that we all can feel like those, those jugglers, right? Trying to keep multiple balls in the air, the work, the family, personal interests, hobbies, health, getting into the gym, having some time with friends. According to a recent study, 66% of full-time employees in the U.S. do not strongly believe they have a work-life balance. This is just a number and it reflects the reality of many workers today, but what if the issues lie not in achieving this balance, but in how we think about our work and personal life in the first place? What if I told you we're doing this all wrong? We're approaching this all wrong. The concept of work-life balance, it's not real. We're striving for something that's not attainable. And it's also not ideal. It's not the ideal that we should be aiming for. Hello everyone, I'm John McCaskill. I'm a retired Navy SEAL turned wellness and leadership consultant. I've worked with some of you in the past, in person and on video, and I'm excited to get into today's into today's topic, and that is harmonizing the hustle and the home life, integrating work and life. This is a topic that touches each of us, the way that we manage our professional and personal lives. In our increasingly connected world, technology has blurred the lines between the office and home in my opinion, has completely erased those lines. And understanding how to harmonize our hustle and our home life has never been more important. This subject holds important for everyone, from the entry level to mid-level management to the, the C-suite. It impacts everyone, and not only our professional productivity and career growth, but also our personal well-being, our personal sense of fulfillment, our personal health and wellness. So let's get started. For many years, <laughs> we've been guided by the idea of work-life balance. This concept traditionally suggests that there is a clear demarcation between personal and professional life, with the goal being to devote equal time and energy to both worlds. And I'm sure you've seen this picture or something like it before. A perfectly balanced scale. On one side you have work, on the other you have life. Now, while this is effective in illustrating the concept it has an intention, unintentional side effect of convincing us that achieving this balance is as simple as just adjusting the weights, right? Moving a little bit of weight from the work side to the life side or vice versa. However, with changing work patterns, the pandemic, the new normal, increased technology use, and shifts in societal attitudes towards work. The concept of work-life balance has evolved into a new paradigm, and that is work-life integration. This perspective 
recognizes that our work and our personal lives are not separate entities to be balanced on a scale, but to be intertwined, intertwined in our overall lives, rather than segregating our lives into distinct blocks. Work-life integration is blending the personal and professional spheres in a way that allows us to maintain productivity at work without sacrificing our personal well-being and our relationships with our friends, our family, our loved ones. So today we're going to delve deeper into this concept and work to understand its implications, explore we as employees, as employers, and in, as leaders, what our roles are, and actively navigate this new paradigm of work-life integration. That all said, as a mindfulness and meditation teacher, I'd be remiss if I didn't start this off with a few minutes of focused breathing, as that can be just as important a part of achieving this work-life integration as anything else we will cover today. So that said, get into that comfortable position, whatever that might look like for you. You may be seated at your desk, you may find a place to lay down, you may be standing at your desk. Whatever is comfortable for you, physically and psychologically. And that includes either closing your eyes or just softening your eyelids. And let's bring our attention very intentionally to our breath. And we can highlight that attention and intention by putting one hand on our chest and one hand on our belly. We're not going to do any forced breathing just yet. We just want to notice the physical aspects of your breathing and bring your focus to that physical side of your inhalation and your exhalation. Noticing the rise and fall of your chest and your belly. Noticing how the air feels as you breathe in versus how it feels as you breathe out. Imagining the air going down into your lungs, expanding your lungs, and feeling that expansion. And now visualizing it leaving your lungs lungs contracting. And now we're going to do a simple box breath exercise. You may have done this in the past. We're just going to do four sets of the box. Breathing in for a count of five, holding for a count of five, breathing out for a count of five, holding for a count of five, and we'll do that four times. So we'll begin by emptying our lungs, bringing your navel to your spine. Nice deep breath in for five. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling for five, four, three, two, one. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Exhale for five. Four, three, two, one. Holding for five. Four, three, two, one. Two more. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Exhale for five. Four, three, two, one. Hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Last one. Inhale for five. Uh, 
Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Last one, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Now go ahead and relax and breathe naturally. Start to bring some micro movements back into your body. Those micro movements are good for moving the, the fluid around throughout your body, but also just waking up your mind. And thank you for allowing me to lead you through that as we go into the rest of this work life integration seminar. So, coming back to that traditional idea of work life balance, it involves trying to partition our energy and our time between our professional responsibilities and our personal life. However, achieving this balance is often challenging due to the unpredictable nature of life and fluctuating needs, fluctuating needs at work, fluctuating needs from family, fluctuating needs from work, uh, well, sorry, our, our, our friends, and, and fluctuating needs just from our daily ins and outs, our to-do list, both personal and professional, paying taxes, changing oil in the car, taking care of the kids, picking up the kids, um, taking care of work. So it changes every day. So striving for that perfect balance can actually counterintuitively lead to stress. It can lead to burnout and it can lead to this feeling of dissatisfaction. If you, if you think that you're going to have this perfect work-life balance and something pops up at work that's going to cause you to stay at work for an extra hour and now you're feeling that that hour is taking away from your personal life, that's gonna cause that stress, that burnout, that dissatisfaction. So as we constantly try to meet those demands on both sides, we have to find that integration rather than that balance. It's important to recognize the limitations and find a, a more flexible approach that prioritizes self-care and overall well-being and satisfaction. So, when discussing this work-life balance, there are common misconceptions that can worsen these issues. Firstly, it's not about achieving a perfect 50-50 split between work and life. I mean, first off, if, if it were a 50-50 split, you'd be spending 12 hours at work and 12 hours outside. I don't think any of us want that daily, <laughs> right? So trying to distribute time equally can create a pressure and unrealistic expectations. Life rarely operates in, in such neat divisions and, and balance can vary from day to day. Secondly, work-life balance doesn't mean dividing time and energy equally. It's about feeling fulfilled and avoiding overwhelm in both areas. These going to, there are going to be times when responsibilities may require dedicating more time to work or vice versa, more time to life, your personal life. It's not going to be 50-50. And last, lastly, you may see someone who you think has the perfect work-life balance. You think they've got it figured out. Well, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. It depends on the individual circumstances. Some people may be single with no spouse, no children, and they may dedicate more effort and energy and time to their work life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people may be married with a whole you know, slew of children at, at home, and they need to spend more time and energy at home than they do at work. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with either. The point is that there's no one size fits all. It depends on our individual circumstances responsibilities and preferences. So the key is finding what works best for you. The new paradigm is work-life integration. Work-life integration challenges the traditional view of work-life balance. Work-life integration 
recognizes the interconnectedness of our personal and professional lives, blending them to fit our individual needs, our individual wants, our individual lives. It acknowledges that work and personal life, they actually influence each other. And it creates a holistic approach that fulfills the responsibilities without that unnecessary stress or conflict, that tension that you feel when you're at home and you get an email, that tension that you feel, should I answer this? Or vice versa, when you're at work and you get an email from home, that tension that you feel. The work-life integration realizes that there's both and they both affect one another. So while the new technology and working trends, working from home, working from wherever, working from the office, can make that work-life integration more challenging, if used carefully, they can achieve it. We can achieve it. Technology um, can actually enable it. Technology provides flexible tools. I mean, here we are on Zoom, right? Some of you may be at home right now. Some of you may be at home watching this later, watching the recording, because the time that this is being recorded didn't fit in your life. So technology provides those flexible tools for remote work, and it allows us to fit our work around our lives, not the other way around. Modern work trends, um, such as flexible work hours, also encourage a non-traditional work schedule. That's part of the work-life integration. Some people may work different hours because that's what works for them, right? So this, this work-life integration, it offers us numerous benefits. Firstly, it allows us to manage work and personal responsibilities and again, fit our work around our lives instead of the other way around. It reduces stress, it improves, it improves satisfaction as we no longer strive for that unattainable, perfect work-life balance, and it boosts productivity. So again, counterintuitive. Not working to achieve the perfect work-life balance actually boosts productivity, because now we're less stressed at work, and we're more content at home. We're more content at home, and we're less stressed at, at work, right? We're, we're both. So work-life integration enhances well-being, by reducing the stress, um, reducing the stress of maintaining those rigid separations, ideally leading to a happier and healthier, more fulfilling life. All right, now with that knowledge, I want to discuss your roles as employers, managers, and leaders in facilitating that work-life integration. I'll discuss this. And then I'll also cover your roles as employees. So as an employer, as a leader, as a manager, organizational culture plays a vital role in promoting that work-life integration. This involves creating a, an environment where employees feel comfortable taking breaks when needed fulfilling those personal obligations and not feeling obligated to always be on. The company culture should value productivity and results rather than mere presence or number of hours worked. That's what matters. It's the productivity and results, not the number of hours worked. I remember when, uh, when I was working in, in one of the SEAL teams years ago, there were a couple of guys hanging out and one of my bosses walked up and he's like, what are you guys doing here? What are you guys still doing here? They're like, we're waiting for the next email to come in. <laughs> we're waiting for the next email to come in, right? And he said, my boss, he's like, well, if you have nothing to do, go do nothing somewhere else. Because it's not about your presence. It's about the productivity and the results. So as managers and leaders, we have that significant role in fostering that work-life integration within our teams. One of the most effective ways we can do this is by modeling it ourselves. Leaders can create that environment where employees feel comfortable 
managing their work and personal lives by openly discussing their own strategies for taking time off and actually taking that time off. Um, and then being aware of your boundaries and others. So don't send work communications outside of the designated hours. Or if you do send them, because hey, this popped into your mind, maybe you set the schedule so hey, you hit send, but it doesn't actually send for a few hours. Or include in your message something to the effect of, hey, I work non-traditional hours, I work outside of most people's work hours, please know that I do not expect a response until I get back to work or until you are back at work. I have that in my signature block with every email that I send. Marissa has probably received emails from me at 1 a.m. Um, I know Teresa and Will and the, the, uh, my counterparts in Movement on Rx, they receive emails from weird hours from me. But it says underneath my email uh, signature block, something to the effect of, hey, I work non-traditional hours. Please know that I do not expect a response outside of your work hours. Unless it's an emergency. And if it is an emergency, then pick up the phone and make a call. Send a text and say, hey, this is urgent. But don't always send an email because if you are sending emails as a boss, as a manager, as a leader, when someone receives that email at 9 p.m., what's their perception? Their perception is that you're expecting response immediately. So we have to put something there to, one, manage our own boundaries, and two, help to manage others as well. So how can we help with that? Well, setting concrete policies and initiatives are essential to promote that work-life integration. These might include that flexible work hour schedule that I talked about, remote work opportunities, policies that encourage employees to take time off for vacation, personal responsibilities, rest and recuperation. Someone, one of my friends posted on LinkedIn the other day, rest is productive. Because guess what? If we don't rest, we reach that point of diminishing, and even worse, that point of negative returns. It's not about grinding and grinding and grinding. We have to find that place where we can rest and recuperate so that we can be more productive. Now, leaders should also embody empathy and understanding, recognizing that each team member may have separate circumstances separate personal battles, difficulties. They can show empathy by listening to their team. We can show empathy by listening to our team, our team members, acknowledging their challenges, and then working collaboratively to find solutions. Now, all this said, I want to go into some examples of some companies that, that do it well. Let's look at Basecamp. Basecamp is a project management team communication software company. They are renowned for their employee-friendly policies. This company has implemented a flexible working hours policy that allows employees to structure their workday around their individual needs. This policy recognizes that not everyone is productive at the same time and that personal obligations may require flexibility. They offer a generous vacation policy. They provide a monthly wellness allowance. They even schedule company-wide time off, and that's referred to as their base camp sabbaticals. And the company also emphasizes a 40-hour work week, avoiding the culture of overtime, that grinding culture, avoiding that culture of overtime and burnout, which is so prevalent in the tech industry. Now let's look at GitLab. GitLab is a, a web-based platform for DevOps lifecycle management. This company provides extensive remote work opportunities. They actually have no physical headquarters or offices. They understand that reducing the commute time and allowing employees to work from an environment of their choice can significantly improve that work-life integration. They recognize that employees can be more productive 
less stressed and generally happier when they have control over their work environments. So that's GitLab. And I have one more, and that's HubSpot, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. They've, they've adopted a culture that focuses on flexibility and work-life fit, recognizing the importance of, of rest and rejuvenation for productivity, employee happiness. HubSpot offers unlimited vacation time as part of their benefits package. Leaders at HubSpot not only advocate for these policies, but they also lead by example by taking that time off, right? As leaders, if we say, hey, you need to take time off, but then we're working 52 weeks a year, hey, we're not, we're not modeling what we're asking our people to do. So HubSpot, the leaders are actually doing that. Now, let's discuss HMI. What is HMI doing right now that's helping with work-life integration? Well, the very fact that we're having this discussion, that shows that HMI cares and HMI is doing something. But what else could you all be doing within your lives at HMI to increase your work-life integration and the work-life integration of your team? So, we've, we've covered the the employers, the leaders, and the managers' roles. And, and many of you will fit into those categories or already do. One or more role, one or more of you also will fill in, fit into the role of employee. Employees have just as much a role in this work-life integration as everyone else. Each individual has a responsibility to manage their boundaries effectively. Going back to that email example, we have to manage those. So if you are receiving emails at 9 p.m., don't respond because the inverse is true, right? Your boss sends you an email at 9 p.m., you feel as though your boss is expecting a response and now you reply. Now that becomes the expectation. You have to manage your work boundaries as well. And that means communicating your availability, putting your out of office on email, putting out of office on Slack, putting out of office on your text messages. You can actually have a response set on your text messages. I use the driving mode on my text messages when I'm setting a boundary. I change what it says where it used to say something about driving. Now it says that I'm away from my phone or I'm spending time with my family and that I will respond back when I am able. So we have to communicate that availability and we have to respect our own personal time and be proactive in creating that work-life dynamic that really models this work-life integration, our individual needs and circumstances. So now let's, let's cover, cover several strategies that can help with this. It helped individuals achieve that successful work-life integration. Effective time management is key. If we're, if we're working at, at work for 10, 11, 12 more, or more hours, take a look at what you've done and see where you may have lost time. You may have wasted time. Now taking a rest, taking a break, going out and walking around, fully encourage that, that's good, taking breaks. But wasting time, maybe in between meetings, surfing social media and watching reels on YouTube or whatever they are over and over to the point where you're wasting time, that, that's not time management, right? So this time management is key. It, it involves techniques such as prioritizing tasks, using productivity tools and apps, and delegating responsibilities. So figure out time management. Work on that get better at time management. Next, I've talked about setting clear boundaries, and that's crucial. And what I have found is people will set boundaries, but then they won't stick to them. They will literally, on their calendar, have their start time and their finish time at work, but then they will continue working outside of those hours, or they will come in prior to, or they'll start responding to emails prior to. So we have to stick to those boundaries. So this could involve defining your specific work hours, taking regular breaks, and then taking some personal time, personal time, whenever that is. It might be in the middle of the day. 
And then lastly, emphasizing self-care and leisure is essential. This means making time for activities to help us relax, like box breathing, right? Maybe just something as simple as that. Recharging um, and, and playing, having some fun outside of work. And it, it could be as simple as reading a book, spending time with a loved one, exercising, getting to the gym, uh, pursuing a hobby. You know, so many of us, when people ask us what we do, we jump right into what we do for work. Well, maybe when the next time someone asks you that question and someone says, what do you do? You can say, do you mean at work or for a hobby or for play, right? Because we're more than just what we do from nine to five or eight to six or whatever your hours are, right? So find something that's going to allow you to have that self-care and leisure. Because taking that time off for ourselves is critical. Now, fortunately, there are various tools, coming back to the time management and the, and the boundaries, there are various tools that are available to us today that can really help to facilitate that work-life integration. There are productivity tools such as task manager um, apps or task management apps, time management apps. Um, on my phone, I have uh, an app called Forest that limits my time on the phone per hour, which keeps me from doing exactly what I just mentioned, getting on YouTube and watching the YouTube shorts or Instagram reels or wasting time. We can find those apps that help us to prioritize our work and manage our time. Virtual communication tools, I mean Zoom right here, uh, Microsoft Teams, there's tons of them, right, that, that allow us to flexibly, flex, to work flexibly and collaborate with our colleagues remotely. Um, there are tons of wellness apps. I, I use an AI, an artificial intelligence app, to drive my fitness, what I do in the gym, because that's part of, you know, going into the gym, it's like figuring out what it is that we're going to do in there is sometimes the toughest part. Well, I have an app that's tailored to me and my fitness goals and my fitness levels, and that helps me to stay on track in the gym. It's a wellness app that's fantastic. Now, there's also learning platforms like LinkedIn Learning, uh, Udemy. There's tons of learning platforms that are out there to, to really develop yourself um, personally and professionally. And then I, I just hired for, for myself a virtual assistant. I don't know if that would work for you, but if you're really struggling with time management, a virtual assistant can be very helpful in helping to manage your email inbox, your schedule, your calendar. That's, that's hugely helpful. So maybe consider a virtual assistant or an executive assistant. Um, furthermore, Many programs offer those wellness programs, those employee assistance programs that provide uh, stress management and uh, things like financial planning, right? We, we have all this finances come into the work-life integration as well. So we have to utilize these tools and resources to assist us in achieving that work-life integration. All right, so I've, I've spoken a lot. Um, and I do have more slides on this, but I don't like ending in Q&A. Um, also, <laughs> I don't like Q&A, period, because I don't feel that I have answers. So rather than doing question and answers, I do Q, O, and E. And that's questions, opinions, and experiences. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys to put in the chat or the questions here on the webinar what your ideas are, your tools, your experiences, um, or any challenges, questions that you may have on ways to harmonize the hustle and the home life. All right, so if I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat. If anything pops in here in a second, then I'll cover that. Um, so let's move on. So let's let's wrap this all up, right? Um, what have we talked about? The traditional notion of work-life balance with an equal split between work and life. That's, that's unattainable and it's not ideal. Instead, that work-life integration, that's gaining momentum. That idea of work-life integration is gaining momentum. It recognizes the interconnectedness of our personal and our professional lives. If we look at this slide here, we can see, hey, we have well-being and health. We've got the community and connecting. We've got home and family. We've got work and career. And all that come together for that work-life integration. Aiming for that seamless blend, right, that aligns with your personal needs 
and your personal preferences. And then achieving that work-life integration, it requires a collective effort. It's not just you. It's you helping others achieve their personal work-life integration and them helping you, employers, to create a culture and policies that facilitate this integration, such as the flexible work hours and the remote work options. Employees must effectively manage their boundaries, prioritize that, that time, utilize their time management techniques, prioritize self-care. Leaders should model that integration, actually taking the time off when they need it, and fostering that, that, that understanding within their teams. And then implementing, implementing the strategies and policies to support it. And then as we move forward, we need to shift from seeking that perfect balance to enhancing and embracing that fluid work-life integration. Employers, employees, leaders, we all have a role in fostering this. This shift from creating that work culture that promotes, we need to shift to a work-life culture that promotes productivity, satisfaction, and overall well-being. And let's commit, commit to harmonizing work and personal life, and then strive towards effective work-life integration, because together you can achieve that. And in achieving it, you're gonna be happier, healthier, and more fulfilled, but you're also going to be more productive. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is harmonizing the hustle and the home life. I appreciate you guys' time and attention today. It's been an honor to share my experiences and insights with you all. If you have any questions, that's my QR code. You can scan to contact me directly. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm, I'm here to support you on, on your work-life integration journey, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So I'm going to take a look again at the chat. Let's see. We've got a few answers in here also. So let's see. Scrolling down. Set available hours in teams for sure, or eight by eight. I'm not sure what eight by eight means, um, but I'm sure you guys do as the those who work there. Adding personal obligations to my calendar so people are aware I'm working away from my computer. Great call, love that. Um, let's see, I'm not sure. I make sure to not look at my work email while I'm in bed. <laughs> yes, so many of us use this thing right here, right? Our phone to wake us up. And then what's the first thing we do after hitting the snooze button a couple times? We start opening up email. We start opening up email, text messages, social media, to start replying to work before we are even out of bed, which puts us into that reactive state before we even get the day started. So great call uh, there, Marissa, not checking your work email um, in bed before or uh, before you go to bed or in the morning. Um, yes, Jeff, I'll send you the list of attendees. Um, utilizing the focus setting on iPhone. Yes, that's fantastic. Absolutely, because yes, that's another great point. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, is when you have your phone in front of you and it starts dinging with all the notifications, and that, this can happen on your, phone, your computer as well, is we get distracted. And when we get distracted, we get out of that state of flow. And that state of flow allows us to be more creative and productive, but it also allows us to feel a sense of well-being. At the end of the day, we can look back and say, oh, yeah, you know what? I got a lot of stuff done. I feel good about having gotten into that state of flow. Whereas if we're continually interrupted, when we look back on the day, we may have gotten portions of a lot of things done, but we really didn't get into that sense of that sense of flow, that, that in the zone, right? So putting that focus on on your phone, but you can also put it on on a lot of your computers these days. So um, there we go. Let's see. All right, eight by eight equals phones, gotcha. All right, monotasking, <laughs> yes, uh, thanks Marissa. 
All right, y'all, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions, that's my QR code. Let me move the bar off there so you can get my QR code if you need. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And I appreciate your guys' time today. And until next time, take care, and I look forward to working with you again.